Idra's multi-ton giga press and a hammer are both designed to smash things, but there the similarity ends. In fact, it's more appropriate to think of the giga press as a factory within a factory than a simple tool. Let's take a look. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So way back when, I did a video on Idra's GigaPress about a year and a half ago. I'll put a link to it up here if you're interested. It turns out that that's the most popular video that I've ever done on this channel, which is kind of crazy. And I actually mentioned that to Corey when we were talking, Corey from Monroe Live. We were chatting about, you know, just stuff. And I said that that was the video that had gotten the most interest on my channel. And he looked at me like, what? That seems really weird. Why would people be interested in something like the GigaPress? It's such a weird, nerdy topic. Anyway, if you haven't seen the chat with Corey, I'll put a link to that as well. But I think the reason why people were so interested is because this tool is a really, really different tool than anything that's out there. Not really in concept, but just in terms of the scope and what Tesla decided that they wanted to do and how they went out and found a company that was willing to take a risk and make a press, a die casting machine, as big as what Idra has done. And now, of course, they've made one that's even bigger that supposedly just arrived in Texas and is being put together in order to manufacture the Cybertruck. So first I'm going to talk about why the GigaPress is an important thing for car manufacturers, but then with the help of Electrified and also Monroe Live, a few clips from them, and of course I'll leave the links to all their videos in the description so you can check them out. They're much, much longer videos. You should definitely look at them. But anyway, I'm going to use those video clips to help create a picture of why Idris GigaPress should be thought of more as a factory within a factory than a simple tool, and why just ordering one from Idra is not going to solve your manufacturing problem. Problems. So first, if you haven't caught Monroe Live's video from today as I record this, it'll be yesterday as it comes out. But anyway, from the 29th of July, Sandy Monroe is on quite the roll today. So I'm going to start with a little fun clip that I really did enjoy. And I'm sure that there's some engineers out there are going, oh no, he's going to rub our nose in it again. And the answer is correct. So basically at that point, Sandy is talking about die casting and how they for 15 years had a sample die cast in their factory showing people what they could do and how nobody until Tesla actually took them seriously. So he's rubbing everybody's noses in the fact that Tesla actually did what he said and now look how successful they are. Sandy then talks about how far Tesla's come since the 2018 Model 3 which they have to the Model Y from 2020 to the 2022 standard range Model Y with three piece casting. You went from basically a dinosaur to uh, something a lot more, uh, lot more creative and inventive to the world-class design that you see sitting over here. So I love how he calls Tesla a dinosaur and pretty much by implication calls everybody else dinosaurs for not using castings. But then he says that Tesla was willing to evolve and other companies so far, at least like Legacy Auto and other large auto manufacturers have not evolved to keep up with what's been going on. And then Sandy takes a closer look at what happened between the multiple parts that were put together in the Model 3 to the two-piece die casting for the rear of the 2020 Model Y, which is actually the model that we have, to now the single-piece rear casting of the 2022 Model Y. I said this should be one part, one part. And I was talking basically about half of this. And guess what? One part. But Elon is one of those guys who's never really quite satisfied. So the one part and the connecting parts and the other part, the other casting, he felt should be one part. And guess what? That's what he did over here. This is the Model Y. This is the casting for the Model Y. And you can see that it's all one part. And you can see that there's a lot of room in here. And finally, let's hear from Sandy about how much better casting is than making individual pieces in terms of cost of quality. And I'll go into that more in just a minute. There is no heat treat required for this because it happens so quickly in basically 
in less than a second. I'm not going to try and tell you in, in, in uh, milliseconds, but, <clears throat> but less than a second this is filled up. That means there's no induced stress. It moves too quickly to have induced stress like a normal casting. So as you can see from these clips, the advantage to Tesla of being able to do something like this and to anybody else who can manage to make this happen is you can create die casts, which are essentially identical pieces from one implementation to the next one. You don't have to build a car through a bunch of pieces that are stamped. You don't have to deal with the storage of that. You don't have to deal with the supplier of all the stamped parts. You don't have to deal with transportation. You don't have to deal with long lead times if you wanna make a correction to something thing and fix it and move forward. There's all these corrections. You don't have to deal with storage space. You don't have to deal with on and on and on. There's all of these logistical things you don't have to deal with. And in addition, Sandy talked about using two by fours to force pieces of cars together into the correct alignment. I guess that actually does happen in factories. So you weld all these pieces together and the tolerances aren't quite right. And you know, the, the trunk of the car won't close and you literally just push on it with a two by four or take a hammer, speaking of hammers, and you know, hammer a two by four to push the thing back into alignment so that the, the trunk will close or the hood will close or the doors will close and it looks proper. So all of those things go away and that's what Sandy refers to as cost of quality. So you can get an inexpensive part, but if it takes you hours or even minutes to make corrections to something because you add a cheap part or multiple parts instead of getting a more expensive part, that can actually ultimately cost you more than just using a quality part to start with. And of course, if we look at the Model Y, the new 2022 Model Y, Sandy remarks about this too, but you can just see it. There's just holes everywhere in this thing, right? It's just a bunch of empty space. So this is all much, much lighter than it was before. There's holes where things used to have to be. And the stiffness of the vehicles is remarkable. Elon has commented about that too. He said they're much, much stiffer than the other versions of the cars. And that just stands to reason. It's a single piece of metal instead of multiple pieces of metal welded together, which can flex versus each other. So of course, the consumer doesn't really see this from the the outside, but you will feel it in terms of the stiffness of the ride, but also the car is going to be lighter, so it's going to have longer range because it's made of less pieces. It's made of less pieces, so it's less likely to break over time or start to flex or become less than really nice to use, right? You don't really like old cars that are like creaking and all of that kind of stuff. I'm sure everybody's had a car like that that gets old and gets personality where it starts creaking and having weird behaviors and stuff. That's not really ideal. So what you want is something like that. The concept is actually relatively simple, right? Matchboxes and Hot Wheels have been doing this for years. They have die cast metal parts, but of course these vehicles are like yay big. <laughs> it's super tiny. I actually looked around, but my kids are all too old. I wanted to find a Hot Wheels car or a Matchbox car just to show it. But you know, but basically they're tiny little things and so it's easy to make a stamp that just pushes them out like that, right? But anyway, the concept of this is really simple. It's just die casting. It's just you're doing this on the scale of an automobile instead of a toy. And this is where we get into part two of this video which is the reason why Legacy Auto and other people that think that they can just go to Idra as well and say, we want one of those too, are not going to just be able to do that and automatically catch up with Tesla. So I wanna back it up for just a minute and touch on a part of Monroe touring the Idra factory from, I think it was about a week ago when they released this video. But anyway, notice what happens when John, I think it's John is the guy who's giving the tour, says that they don't do any hot testing, which means testing with actual aluminum in the die casting machines at the Idra factory. Watch how Sandy Monroe like looks at him and looks again and actually slows down in his walking. He kind of hesitates and actually gets behind the other people during the tour. So essentially this machine will be uh, tested in a, in a dry capacity. Here in Italy, we can't actually do any hot testing with aluminum. Really? Um, because of yeah. the facility. So what we do is we do a dry test here where we uh, run the machine in a simulated cycle. Uh -huh. And uh, during that cycle, we are doing a soak test for uh, 28 or 48 hours, depending on the customer mm. requests. So, okay, Sandy was clearly not happy about what he heard from that. What is the big deal about it? This is where we get from catalog engineering and buying a hammer at Lowe's or something like that to what a gigapress is. So of course, first to use this analogy, if you're trying to nail things into a board or something and you don't happen to have a hammer, you go to Lowe's or Home Depot or Walmart or someplace like that and you buy yourself a hammer, you get the hammer, you come home and you start to use it. That is a simple tool, doesn't take an awful lot of configuration or anything, you can use it immediately. 
Then there are more complicated tools up to things like robot arms and stuff. And if you haven't seen my talk with Scott Walter about this, you can check that out. But he talks a lot about robots and how they're used at SpaceX, but of course also at Tesla as well. And those are very complex, but they tend to still be tools. They do individual actions. A gigapress, on the other hand, is more like what I was saying, a factory within a factory. You have to take in raw materials, raw aluminum, things like that, whatever the mix is. You have to smelt it all down. You have to inject it at very high speeds into these molds, press it into shape, cool it down very rapidly, open the whole thing up, take out the die-casted piece, put it away and do the next thing. That is a very complicated series of actions and actually kind of performs what a factory does, right? A factory takes raw materials in on one side, it does a bunch of stuff and it creates a product on the other side. So yeah, you've got raw materials and you've got a product. The product is not as complicated as a full car, but still it's doing all of those pieces to create a product, not just act on some product that was made. And so that makes the Gigapress much more like a factory than a tool. And there's the rub about all of this. And of course, since the universe is full of nexuses and things, Dylan from Electrified actually talked about this yesterday. Tesla Mag is saying one of the limiting factors to production at Giga Berlin has been with the Gigapress machines and that they're producing too much scrap material to the tune of 60%. Now, the good news is after these upgrades, now the scrap rate has been reduced to around 10%. On Twitter, Tesla Mag actually shared this picture that is seemingly a bunch of this scrap from the Gigapress machine at a local scrapyard. Now, I can't confirm if this is real or not, but I think it was at least worth sharing. So if a picture is worth a thousand words, that picture of that gigantic scrap heap with all of the discarded Model Y, either front or rear castings, I couldn't quite tell. But anyway, that gigantic gigantic pile shows how difficult this was. As Dylan was noting, the Gigapress was producing 60% bad pieces to start with. They've now got it down to 10%, which is probably a fairly usable amount. But 60%, that means that more than half of these die-casted pieces were scrap metal that they then had to send off to get recycled. And hopefully, I guess, they'll recycle it and send it back to them as fresh ore. But that's very expensive and it's a complete nightmare and obviously won't allow these factories to ramp up as fast as people are hoping, which of course is what Dylan was talking about as one of the reasons why they're only at 1,000 to 1,500 vehicles per week at this point, rather than higher. So what's the problem here? The problem here is that these gigapresses are, you know, first of all, they're brand new. Yes, they are things that people have done before. Obviously, people have been making die casting machines forever, but this sort of scale is gigantic, and each one of these things is kind of a one-off. You know, they, they make these machines, and yeah, they may make a few of them, but they're kind of inventing them as they go. There's a whole bunch of new technology. And then as they were talking about on the tour, they can't do hot tests, which means they can't put aluminum into it and do the injection molding and see how it works. So they're basically, you know, pretending. They put it in, they, they, they you know, push some air through or some liquid or something like that. They open it back up again, they try again. So they're testing it out, but they're not testing it out with the actual materials in it. And so it simply will not work when the customer gets it, like when Tesla gets it which is exactly how you can end up with 60% scrap when you start this thing. And it's not like they're gonna automatically solve this problem in Texas too, right? It's not like the machine in Berlin is exactly identical to the one in Texas. It's going to take some tweaking even on that end, although I assume the people in Berlin, once they got it working, they can then go to Texas and make it happen much more quickly. But in addition to that, there's also the whole thing about material science and everything, because they're not doing this in Italy with actual aluminum, but then also Tesla has a proprietary aluminum mix that they're using. And it's quite possible that with each gigapress, they have to tweak that material quality just a little bit by whatever additives they put in on the basic aluminum structure of these molecules. So all of this stuff is happening at once. You basically have to have engineers who test it out and use it and fix it once they get the machine in house. And then you have to have engineers who adjust it as it's going to try to get the run rate better. Then you have to have engineers who work on simulations and fluid flow and you have to have engineers who are working on materials and material science for what gets injected into it. 
and engineers to work on the exact shape of these die casting molds, and probably many other engineers that I'm not even thinking of right now. So it is a huge task. Again, what we're getting here is sort of akin to a factory that has a bunch of tools inside of it, but you then have to send engineers in who tweak it and make all the tools operate and create an actual running factory out of it. So rather than ordering this GigaPress from Idra and it comes in on the ship and they put it together and you push a button and it starts popping out the shape that you want, there are many, many, many steps that are involved and they're not basic steps. They're not like following a recipe. Each of these problems is like a research problem on its own and engineers are working on this, trying to get this thing up to speed because it not only has to be able to make these shapes, it has to be able to do them as quickly as expected. So there are a huge number of steps. There are a huge number of very complicated steps and all of this stuff takes a great deal of time. Six to nine months plus is kind of a good estimation for how long it takes one of these giga presses to go from delivery at the factory to actually producing 90 plus percent good parts. And if you're wondering why the Cybertruck hasn't come out yet, yes, one of the reasons is almost definitely the 4680 battery ramp, but also if they are indeed using this gigantic new Idra Giga Press, which is even bigger than the other ones, this is gonna be the first of its kind and it could easily take nine plus months to get this thing up to speed and running and producing the parts that they want at a fast enough rate that they're actually able to produce these trucks. So fewer parts, fewer machines, fewer activities like welding and things like that, those are all the goal and casting is the solution, but you can't just order one of these and start using it. And that's the reason why legacy automobile companies are simply not going to be able to catch up with Tesla. I love how Sandy Monroe calls it catalog engineering. Basically, you just go like, oh, I want one of those. You buy it, you put it in the factory, and it just automatically works. That's not the way the GigaPress works. But going back to Tesla, one thing to remember is the Model Y you buy today is not the Model Y you bought a year ago, and next year it will be the same thing. This is what happens when you only have a few models to build. You can keep making each one better and better. And that's a huge argument against what other people are pushing, which is that many, many models are needed to be successful. In fact, this is definitely the way to go in my opinion. Make one perfect car, not a dozen okay ones. And Giga Casting is a huge step forward in this. Not at all easy, but totally necessary to make it happen. You have to build that factory within a factory to make constructing your vehicles even even more efficient. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and interesting and thought-provoking. If you did, please do like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for your support. As I said in a previous video, I'm going on a road trip this week. In fact, I'll already be gone by the time you see this video. But my Patreon patrons all know where I am and where I'm going, and they can sort of follow along with me. So definitely consider joining the team if you're interested. And if you're interested in a whole bunch of really cool merch, check out our merch store. Link is in the description. We have TeslaBot t-shirts the Tesla meme t-shirt, success is a possible outcome, 4680 battery cells, all of that stuff is on t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, and on and on. So check it out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.